Thank you, Brother and Sister Willow, for that beautiful song this morning. And thank you again for coming out this morning under the weather that we're having. I appreciate that. And let me just say to my son, Kent, I really, really have appreciated um, Kent this morning. Um, for the last two Sundays, um, as I've come to church, Kent says, Dad, you want me to go with you? And he is here shoveling the sidewalks, salting the sidewalks. And let me tell you that not every teenager would be wanting to get up that early in the morning to come with Dad and make sure the church was ready. And I just want to say thank you, Kent, for your help. Um, our kids have always been an important part of our ministry, whatever we've done, and um, that blesses this dad's heart. So thank you, Kent. I just want to also remind one other announcement I forgot to make is that there will be church here this evening at 6 p.m. So we'd love to see you this, this evening at 6 p.m. here. Well, this morning as I was preparing and was studying downstairs, um, um, I realized something. I have a couple of different Bibles that I use, um, but one particular Bible that I use when I preach is a little bit different. It has... Um, a little bit larger font in it it's, um, so I can see it and so I don't have to hold my Bible up here as I'm reading. And um, some of you all understand that and I was fearful this morning as I was sitting at my desk did I leave my, my preaching Bible at home. Thankfully, I did not, and I have it. So y'all, some of y'all are laughing. Either you, you understand and you share with my misery, or um, you will understand in just a few years. This morning, I'm going to be reading from the book of um, John, St. John chapter 1. Dr. Fry had commented a few weeks ago that um, we, he and I had talked and we had decided that this year we had like to go back over some of our, our sermons that we have previously preached and topics that we have preached on and now realize that when we do that, it's not we're just preaching an old message, we are taking those messages and we are working on them. And I have been preaching over the last several times that I've preached on worship, and, and I'm going to continue to, in the few weeks to come, to be preaching on that same subject. But over the last couple weeks, another message that I preached back in 2016 has, has been on my heart. And the subject is grace. And if you have your Bibles, I'm going to be reading in St. John chapter 1, starting with verse 14. And we read these words. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, glory as, the, uh, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And John bore witness about Him and cried out, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me because He was before me. For from His fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And as my text, I am looking there at the words, For from His fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Now this phrase, grace upon grace, has been the source of a lot of debate of, by Christian writers and what was it that they was trying to say here. What exactly was it that John was trying to say? Now the, the, the Greek, if you, you translate this literally into Greek language, it was grace instead of grace. Now that's a whole lot more clear, isn't it? We all understand, no. What did, what did that mean? Grace instead of grace. As I was reading, reading this, this weekend on this subject, one says the meaning may be that in Christ we find one wonder leading to another. Grace leading to grace. A missionary came before an old ancient king, and the king asked the missionary what he might expect if he became a Christian. The missionary answered simply, you'll find wonder upon wonder, and every one of them is true. You know this idea of grace upon grace. 
the idea of finding grace and wonder leading to, to another is kind of what I was thinking of several years ago. It was about this time of year my, my family and I were, were going down to Hope Sound, Florida to be the children's workers. It was not that many years because everyone in my vehicle had their cell phone. Now, I don't know what your feeling is about this, but when you are the driver and you're driving down the road and everyone in the car is so, so fixed on their cell phones the entire time, no one talks, no one looks up, but they're like this. They not only had their cell phones, they all had their earbuds and earphones on, and so there was like utter silence, and here I am just driving, feeling like by myself. But we, as I'm, they we're driving, everyone's like this. We were in the mountains down, down south in the Appalachian Mountains, and as we began to go over those mountains, we crested a place, and I looked out at a vista, a beautiful, beautiful vista. But there was everyone in my car. <laughs> Missing it. And I think I even kind of said, wow, look at that. No one heard a single word I said. And I thought to myself, Brother Seth, that is beautiful. I mean, that is like a postcard, and that is just one of the most incredible, I think, beauties you could see. Nothing could be any prettier than that. They were cheering for me. <laughs> but as I went around the next bend, lo and behold, there was another beautiful scene, even probably even prettier than the last. And I would think, oh, nothing could get even more beautiful than that. And then we crested a hill, and there was beauty upon beauty upon beauty. And I wonder, my friends, if maybe this isn't maybe what the writer was talking, grace upon grace. Is it that what John was trying to say about God's grace? The longer we go, the more we experience, the more we serve him, the more we find that his grace is grace upon grace upon grace. The same writer went on that said, maybe perhaps we need to look at this more literal. For in Christ we find grace instead of grace. The different stages and different situations in life demands a different kind of grace. We need one kind of grace in the days of prosperity and another kind of grace in the days of adversity. We need one kind of grace in our youth and another kind of grace in our not-so-youth. I thought about my mama. She had a lot of grace raising me. But you know, I noticed the grace that she had. Don't, oh, honey, you don't have to shake her your head and agree. But she, she had, I look at my mom now, and I think of the grace she had when I was a kid. That took a lot. And I think when I see her with all her grandkids, she is way different. But you know what? It's different places and stages of our life and different times of our life that we need different kinds of grace. You know, the church needs a different grace as we face days of persecution and in days of acceptance. We need a different kind of grace when we feel on top of life, and we need a different kind of grace when we feel like life is on top of us. The grace of God is never static, but it is always dynamic. It never fails to meet the situation that we are in. I liked what one writer said. He said, one need invades life, and one grace comes along with it. And that need passes, and another need assaults us. But following right behind that assault is more grace. All through life, we are constantly receiving grace instead of grace. For the grace of Christ is triumphantly adequate to deal with any situation that we might face. You see, grace upon grace. So, but what is grace, Pastor Davis? What is this grace that you're talking about? You say it's always new and refreshing and it always meets all of our needs, Brother Davis, but what is grace? As I was looking up definitions of grace, this is what I found out. Our small group, I believe, not long ago, we were talking about what is the word grace. We talk about it, we sing about it, we testify about it, but what is grace? 
What is it? It has been defined as a favor or mercy shown by God to sinners. It has also been defined as the free and unmerited favor of God manifested in, in the salvation of sinners and, so not only sinners, and the bestowal of blessings. I love this definition. Grace is the love and mercy given to us by God because God desires us to have it. Not necessarily because of anything we have done to earn it, because we can earn it. But it goes on to say, it is not a created substance of any kind. It is an attribute. It is a characteristic of God. Philip Yancey said this about grace. We can never sink so far that God's grace will not reach us. We've all said that and thought of that, right? But at the same time, grace does not leave us there. It raises us up to new heights. Oh, did you hear that? God's grace doesn't just reach down and just hold me down there, but God's grace reaches down to wherever we are, and it picks us up and takes us to heights we never, ever imagined in our life. Grace. Well, folks, this morning I want to look at three things about grace, three particular things about this grace upon grace. The first thing that I notice about grace is God's grace does not discriminate. Aren't you thankful that God's grace doesn't discriminate this morning on who you are? God's grace, it says in Titus 2.11, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people. God's grace does not discriminate. This morning, I'm glad to tell you that God's grace is for all of us. It does not matter who you are. It does not matter where you have come from. It doesn't matter the color of your skin or the education you have attained, the amount of money that's in your pocket or in your bank account. It does not matter the name brand clothes that you are wearing or the car that you're driving or the bicycle you're riding. It does not matter what you have done or the sin that you have committed, I'm telling you this morning, God's grace does not discriminate this morning. It does not depend on where you were raised, in the church or in a crack house. It does not matter what your name is or who you are related to this morning. God's grace does not discriminate. Sometimes I'm afraid that we think God's grace does discriminate. I'm going to be guilty of that. There have been times that I've thought that maybe my sin was too big or that I was too bad or too unforgivable. But I'm thankful this morning that whoever you are, whatever you have done in your life, that God's grace is sufficient and it does not discriminate. No matter who you are, what you've done, no matter how much you have sinned, it is easy as a person to think that there is so, still some sins that are unforgivable. I remember growing up, and I'm not saying I heard it here in this church, but I remember in my life hearing preachers talk about certain sins, and it was almost as, as if God's grace could not reach some sins. And there are many people, adults today, that struggle with the idea that maybe I've committed something and I've gone too far, I've done too much, I've crossed that line. Can I tell you something? There is no line out there that God's grace cannot go beyond, that God's grace cannot make a difference. I'm telling you this morning, God's grace does not discriminate. This morning, I'm glad to say that God's, God's grace reaches everyone. The scriptures tells us, for God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My friend, if you want to talk about a grace that does not discriminate, right there is the proof that we have that God's grace is for every single one of us this morning. It doesn't matter who you are. God's grace is for you. But not only does God's grace not discriminate, but God's grace does not expire either. 2 Timothy 1.9 says, Who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. I am here to tell you his grace has always been and will never expire. Unlike the milk in your refrigerator, have you checked it recently? It expires. Unlike your driver's license, it expires. Matter of fact, I was talking to someone this week and they were talking about taking a trip, but they suddenly realized they can't fly. Their driver's license expired. God's grace doesn't expire. Your plates on your car will expire, my friends, but God's grace does not expire. It never goes bad. Nothing you have to renew. Nothing you have to worry about paying for. It's not that his grace is good today, but not good tomorrow, my friend. You see, God's grace never expires. I was thinking just this weekend about this thought that God's grace doesn't expire, and I was thinking about my brother, a man, a young man who was raised in the same home with the same opportunities. We sat in the same Sunday school with the same Sunday school teachers, the same opportunities, but we took two different paths in life. My brother searched for happiness. He searched for something that would bring him peace. He searched. It took him down a path that was hard and rough and full of pain. I can remember as adults my brother calling me and asking me questions. He experienced, he tried everything there was in life and it only brought heartache and pain. And when he had practically lost everything, when he was at the bottom of the barrel, one of his coworkers said, Brian, why don't you come to church with me this Sunday? And he thought I had nothing else to lose, nothing else to do. And so he went. And that Sunday morning, in a church in southern Indiana, a young man who had wasted his life, tried everything and done everything in life, found that morning that God's grace had not expired. You want to talk about someone that would have seemed as though he had lost it and went too far. You want to talk about someone that would, many people had written off. But that morning, he found God's grace had not expired. And I don't know who you are this morning and where you are in life. Can I tell you, you can't go so far that God's grace just runs out for you. God's grace does not expire. If you are a mom or you're a dad this morning, you're a grandma or a grandpa, or you're a son or daughter, and there's someone in your family you've been praying for, don't quit. Don't give up. God's grace doesn't expire. That one that you're holding on to and praying for, keep on praying because God's grace still works today. But my friends, God's grace, not only it does not uh, d uh, discriminate, it does not expire but God's grace has no limits. In 2 Corinthians 9a, we read, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. God has promised us that his grace will never, ever run out. You know, we often worry about tomorrow. Okay, I worry about tomorrow. Y'all don't worry about anything, do you? I worry about tomorrow. I worry about today sometimes, too. And how it's going to work out. And all the questions that I have. I worry about how things are going to end up. 
But God has promised us that his grace is sufficient. He has promised that he'd never leave us. We worry, will there be enough grace to get me through this trial or through this test? Will there be enough grace? But I'm here to tell you that we have hope and promise that God's grace isn't just, just enough. But he has promised that it will grow. In 2 Peter 1, 2, it says, May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Do you realize, do you know what he was trying to say? When you get more knowledge and you draw closer and you draw near, you're going to find God's grace just begins to multiply. His grace is sufficient. Grace grows as we come to know him, as we begin to serve him. If this morning you're facing some pretty big mountains, if this morning... You're staring down some pretty big, ugly giants. Remember, God's grace has no limits. You cannot use it all up. You don't have to worry about it's going to run out or run up or run dry. You don't have to wonder if it will be there tomorrow morning if you wake up. My friends... God's grace is limitless. And you know, sometimes in life, we, we, we think of grace and maybe we apply it to sin. But this morning, my friend, if, if you are suffering with pain, can I tell you God's got grace for you this morning? This morning, if your life is being racked with depression and anxiety, can I tell you that God's got grace and help for you this morning? This morning, my friend, if you're hurting from wrongdoings, and if there's injustice in your life, can I tell you, friend, that God's got grace for you this morning? Whatever it is that you are facing today, God's got grace for you. That is not just some nice cliche. It's not just words being said by a preacher. That's God's word. God's caught grace for you and whatever you're facing and whatever you're going through. My friend, there is no limits to God's mercy. There are no limits to God's favor, and there are no limits to God's love, my friend. You see, in conclusion... Grace, God's grace, it doesn't discriminate. It does not expire. And it has no limits. But I want us to apply this now to our lives, church. It's wonderful to know that God's got grace. It's wonderful to know that God's got grace that does not discriminate, that God's grace doesn't expire. That God's grace has no limits. But you know, church, this morning, we have been called to be the hands, the feet, the face, the lives, the voice of Christ in this world we live in. And when the world looks at me, and when the world looks at you, what do they see? Do they see grace? Do they see grace that does not discriminate? Do they see grace that doesn't run out? I'm thankful my mama's grace never run out or expired. I think across my life, I think of some of those people in the church that I grew up with. They never, their grace and their love and their kindness never did expire. I was thinking, as you preached last week on your, on your Grandpa Jack, his Grandpa Jack was, was a wonderful man. Grandpa Jack, when I was a young boy searching and trying to get my roots down, went to the altar because I kept thinking I lost it. I lost it. I lost it. And I knelt down one Sunday at the altar, and his Grandpa Jack got on the other side with love, compassion, and with grace, spoke into my ear some words. And I'll tell you this, I haven't struggled with those questions since. 
grace. You know, folks, we are living in one of the hardest times of life. We are living in so much controversy everywhere we turn and so much division. You know what God wants us to have is he wants us to be the demonstration of grace. He wants us to show grace that doesn't discriminate. He wants us to show grace that doesn't expire or grace that does not have any limits. Friends, grace. God's grace. Grace upon grace. Pastor Davis, how much grace should I have with some people? Grace upon grace. Oh, that's easier said. <laughs> easier done. I know. Believe me. And sometimes I have to pray, Lord, just give me more grace. Because he has enough grace to help me have grace. He has enough grace for all of us in whatever we're going through, whatever we're facing. But let when the world sees me, let them see the grace of God. For from his fullness, we all have received grace upon grace. Let us stand. Lord, we thank you for this day that you have given to us. We're thankful, O oh Lord, for your presence. We're thankful, Lord, for the lessons that you have taught us, dear Lord, and for your grace that you have, you have bestowed and given to us, dear Lord, in our lives. Lord, had it not been for grace, where would I be? Had it not been for grace, where would any of us be this, this morning? But your mercy, your grace, your love, your favor, oh, Father, has made a difference in our hearts and our lives. And we ask you, dear Lord, to help us this week, dear Lord, to, to just sometimes bathe in your grace, dear Lord. But, oh, Father, help us to be a reflection as we deal with others, as we interact with others, dear Lord, in trying times. Dear Lord, help us to show grace that does not discriminate. Help us to show grace that does not expire or run out. Help us, dear Lord, to have grace that is limitless, dear Lord. And Lord, when we struggle, help us, dear Lord, to turn to you who is our help, dear Lord, and will give us what we need. We thank you, dear Lord. Go with this, thy people. Keep them safe and bring them back. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Thank you.